We are who we bless you today. We thank you for your son, Yahushua. We thank you for the good land. We thank you for the good fellowship and good foods. And we thank you for being a privilege to be a part of your food coat, your feast of tabernacles, giving you honor and glory and praise. And we know who's in the camp, you and Yahushua and Cole Israel. And we just love and appreciate you for sharing with Yahushua, man. All right, tonight. Why are you on that frequency? And so we need to understand. Some, sometimes we do. Uh, I forget how it goes. Uh, it's an old saying. Uh, he that knows why is he is better than he knows what for. Somebody to Google it, but I, I think that's the way it goes. But anyway, I, we want to know why. And I, I have a wife. She used to get whippings because the first thing out of her mouth was. Miss Tamara, first thing out of your mouth was why, <laughs> and uh, why? <laughs> she's still like that today. Why? why? <laughs> but um, we only need to understand why we're on a certain frequency, so that uh, if there needs to be an adjustment, or remember, life is a series of adjustments, and so sometimes we have to adjust to uh, uh, get on uh, the correct frequency, and uh, I want to. Uh, Let's see, where's that at? Um, I want to look at the. How many remember the rich man uh, that went to hell? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. See, he finally understood why he was on that frequency. Let's go to that. Uh, Luke chapter 16, start at verse 19. <clears throat> and so uh, we need to understand why we do some things and why we shouldn't do some things. And, uh, why we where are we at? All right, Luke 16, beginning in verse 19. And there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that when the beggar died, he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And he saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. Mm. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So there's a frequency <laughs> that is set <clears throat> that Abraham couldn't go this way, and a rich man couldn't go that way. See, and that's what the Abba does. Remember, frequency brings things together. It also keeps things separate. In this case, there's a great gulf or a frequency <clears throat> that kept the, the rich man from getting to Abraham and from Abraham to go into his side. He always sets up fences or frequencies so that things can remain just like he wants them to. And we got to realize that in our lives. There are things in our lives we wonder why, why, why. Well, he's trying to tell us why, but as in the rich man's case, he found out why, but it was too late to change. Mm -hmm. See, we don't want that. While we're living and, and breathing, we want to find the why and get it right. Because, see, remember, it's not the beginning or the middle, but it's the yeah. Lazarus. He's a beggar. He was on bottom. Guess what? He rose to the top. Cream always what? Well, see, and so sometimes we're in, in situations where it uh, seems like uh, where we are actually on the bottom, but that's okay. See, as long as we keep our eyes on the prize and understand why we're there. See, sometimes he takes us there for other people's sakes. I'll say it again. Sometimes we have to go through things for other people's sakes. Jacob wasn't in the in, in, uh, 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 Egypt. Egypt or uh, 
Earl Chaldees, uh, because, just for his sake, but it was for Uncle Laban's sake, because Uncle mm. Laban said, it's because of you that I'm getting blessed. But look what he had to go through. See? And so when we understand why things are happening to us, it's a lot easier for us to be obedient, a lot easier for us to let our wings down and accept where we're at. But the thing of it is, we can never give up. Never give up. And so here's the rich man. Reading him more, he found out exactly why he was where he was at. <clears throat> All right, verse 27 of Luke 16. <clears throat> then he said, I pray therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they don't hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded Though one rose from the dead. And guess what? One rose from the dead and they were not persuaded. That's right. See? And so the guy found out why he was where he was at, but it was too late to change. <clears throat> See, so why, while we're breathing, we need to find out the why so we can get on the right frequency that will help us to cross the finish line. See, so everything's about crossing the finish line. And so it didn't look good for Lazarus. Just look what happened to Lazarus. He was a beggar. He died. Got resurrected. Died again. <laughs> now he's in Abraham's bosom. But see where he ended up? So remember, it's where you end up. It's not where you're at right now, because where you're at right now is temporary. And so that's why we always have hope and courage to keep on moving because we know who knows when the Father will turn his face toward us and cause his face to shine and give us peace. Yeah. See, we want his face to shine upon us because the Father is light and in him is no darkness or shadow of turning. See, and so that's what they always pray. Cause your face to shine upon us. And so, uh, and it can happen when we understand what's going on. See, remember, uh, understanding is what? Half the battle. Half the battle yeah. So the only other thing we have to do is apply what we understand. So that's why it's so important that we find out why. Because sometimes we don't understand why, but we need to uh, dig a little <laughs> deeper and find out why. Because in that why is the answer or the solution that we're looking for. How many can see that? Yeah. Yeah. Inside that why is the answer or the solution. And sometimes the why is just simply a uh, bad brain. <clears throat> we, just, we get the bad brain and all we come up with is bad brain and more bad brain. And uh, so that's important. Now, while we're in Luke... Uh, Let's go to the prodigal son. He found out why, didn't he? Luke 15, 11 to 32. All right, Luke 15, beginning in verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered everything together and took his journey into a far country. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent everything, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he desired to fill his belly with the husk that the swine ate, and no man gave him anything. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I die with hunger? I will arrive. Hold it right there. So he found out why, didn't he? Yes. He said, I'm in this pig pen because I spent everything I had. And once he found out why, <clears throat> the scripture says that he did what? He came to himself. See, so inside the why, he found a solution. He found his answer. 
See what I mean? That's why we need to find out the why. Where whatever we where we're in this situation or that situation that doesn't seem so healthy to us, we need to find out the why, because inside the why is the solution. And so there he was. He went through all these different places and wound up in the pig pen. Whereas most of religion today in the pig pen. But we're hoping that they come to themselves. See, we, we were once, we ain't got nothing to brag about. We were once in the pig pen, too. Yeah. Ate everything the pig had. Absolutely. Everything is just weird. Yep. And so, the Father helped us come to ourselves. And so, we went back to the Father's house. That's why the scripture says, seek ye the old paths, where it is the good way. So, we came to ourselves and we said, we're going to seek the old path because this place is so confusing yeah. and, it, and it's in its out and backwards and it doesn't make sense. And they do things that, that the scripture calls an abomination. And the, the pig, they, they, they worship on the wrong day, they <clears throat> call by the wrong name and titles and all of this. And we got tired of it. I know I did. I got tired of it because I knew. I said, them, I got them told something wrong. What I read in this book and what y'all are doing are not the same two things. And I got demoted for it. I said, that's okay. It's all right with me, but I, I'm sticking with the truth. Amen. See, and that's what you're hooshed with. Know the truth, and the truth will do what? Set you free. And it set us free. Look at us today. We're free from all that mess. Yes, I'm and I'm the, and the, their most holiest day was the saddest day of the year. More people had. Uh, had depression and all those different things on that day than any other day of the year, but it's supposed to have been their best day. Mm. That lets you know, wait a minute, something wrong with this. And so that's why we got to learn the why in the prodigal son. He found out why he was in the pig pen. Because <clears throat> he spent all that he had with riotous living. And he said, look, even the pigs, even the nasty pig got more than me. But he came to himself. All right. <clears throat> All right. Picking back up in Luke 15, verse 18 says, I will arise and go to my father and I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. And I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. And had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on. Him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring out the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And he began to make merry. So... What was the father's attitude? Just glad he came back. My son finally got himself together. See, and so many times we, we think, like he said, he's unworthy, but the father was so glad he got his act together. See, and that's why we need to treat people. We're so glad they got their act together. Amen? Amen. And so he found the why, and in the why was his solution. He said, I'll go back home. I'll go to my father's house but I, I can eat all the bread I want I can eat all the meat I want and I won't be down here with these sneaking pigs yes. see inside the why is the solution and the answer we're looking for so we need to ask ourselves why and then we'll find out and then we can apply what we found out amen, amen. isn't that amazing Seem like sometimes we think things are so hard, but yet, why? It's pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> so inside of why, it's a solution and an answer. And so he got up and went back home, and the father was so glad that the son had got himself back together. And he gave him, he said, uh, take him on that to clothes off of him, give him a new robe, new shoes, put a ring on him. And, and he said, go kill the fatty cat. We were at the party because this is my son that was dead. He's now alive. He has gotten himself back together. And that's a great thing when we can get ourselves back together. Because we all mess up once in a while. 
we'll come to ourselves and find the why and then get back on the road again. Ooh. The fathers, what? Welcome us with open arms. What does the scripture say? Heaven rejoices over what? One sinner, One sinner that comes to himself. See, rather than all those others, heaven rejoices over one when it gets itself together. It says, I need to go back home. I need to go back to the Father's house. See, we're in the Father's house. We want to stay in the Father's house. Because at the right hand of the Father, remember there's <clears throat> uh, four things that we're all looking for. If I can remember them now, power. Do we have power? What does the scripture say? Power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Power to get wealth. He didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound. So we find power in him. Pleasure. What's at his right hand? Pleasure is forevermore. Mm -hmm. See? And what's he going to give us in the new city? All things, all the pleasure we get. And we run out of our nostrils, so to speak. <laughs> See? Protection. The name of Yahuwah is a what? Strong power. The righteous running into it, and it is safe. safe. And in Psalm 91, he's abides on the shadow of the Almighty. Wow. So we got protection. See? We have angels that help us and protect us. Uh, pleasure, power, where am I at? <laughs> power, pleasure, protection. protection and uh, there's one more. I can't think of it right now. Um, anybody remember? <laughs> uh, I'll get back to it. Anyway, that's a fourth one. Uh, maybe it's in the back of my book. But there's a fourth one. And so we need to realize whatever we're looking for is in him. Everything we're looking for is directly in him. But we got to get on his frequency in order to obtain it. How many see that? Yeah. And so that's why we uh, work and work on getting, understanding why I'm where I'm at. Sometimes he puts us there for a reason. Let's go to uh, 1 Kings uh, 17 and start at verse 4. All right, 1 Kings 17, <clears throat> beginning in verse 4. And it shall be that you will drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of Yahweh. For he went and dwelt by the book by the brook Hedeth, which is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of Yahweh came to him, saying, Arise and get to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I've commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks. Okay, hold it. So here's the great prophet Elijah, Eliyahu. Where is he at? Directly on the bottom. Ravens, not one, but ravens came and brought him his food. He's drinking out of the brook. And the brook dries up. And you wonder, uh oh, <clears throat> why am I here? Because the father wanted to prove to the world he's a miracle worker. So he said, go to this little widow woman in Zarephath. And she will sustain thee. And she had what? Two sticks? Mm -hmm. A little cruise of oil. oil and a handful of meal. And what happened? Three and a half years. See, but the question was, Eliyahu told her, go make me a cake first. How many of us would have said, uh, are, you, are you kidding me? <laughs> I ain't got but a handful of meal <laughs> and a little cruise of all two sticks and you want me to make you one first? But she understood the why. 
she knew that she was looking at a great prophet. And he wouldn't tell her that for just any reason. So Eliyahu understood the why that he had to go to her because he was demonstrating to the world during the tribulation period. There's a son that's going to be protected. And even you who should broke it. He said there was only one widow woman in Eliyahu's day. And she had not only prayed for herself, but Eliyahu and her son. See? And so the, he, they understood the why that they had to go through this. See, we have to go through some things. So Yahweh wants to prove things through us to other people and to the world at large. And so he proved to the world that, hey, I can take care of a prophet, a woman, and a son for three years while I rest them starving. See, he's great about that. Remember, I forget what chapter it is. It rained in one city on one side and didn't rain on the other. He said, I, I'm just that. Um, my, he said, when I set a frequency, <laughs> nothing passes over. So <clears throat> she went and did she was saying, and the thing about it was, supposing she wasn't obedient. She would have died, wouldn't she? Mm. See how important the obedience is? Yes. Very important. And that's why we got to understand the whys. Because inside the why is the answer and solution. And so I remember the other P. The other P was prosperity. Oh. How many want prosperity? Yes. 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 And he's one of the prosperous. Scripture says, and all these things, Deuteronomy 20, all these things that come on you and overtake me. If that's your heart, kind of the voice of y'all who the hell is to keep his commandments. <clears throat> See? Yeah, I think so. Read it for me. Show you how good he is. Uh, when y'all are such a freaking thing, nothing can pass it. All right. Um, Amos 4 and 7. And also, I have withholden the rain from you. When there was yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained did not wither. What does that kind of remind you of? Should remind you of something. That too, but this rain. What about uh, Gideon's fleece? Oh, yes. Wet here and dry here. <laughs> Same piece of material. Wet here and dry here. See, see, I just, see, wet, wet one day and dry yeah. the next. See, he can do, he's, he's so great. So why, see, once we understand why we're going through what we're going through, we have the solution to get on the right frequency. But sometimes we just have to go through it. Yeah. There's no other way around it. And so uh, remember, Surrender takes the pain out of suffering. suffering. Amen. Just think, if you're out on the road, out on in, in town, and and the, and that the, 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 uh, policeman put that stick on you, what you gonna do? Surrender. Surrender, and, and you, he takes that stick off of you. But if you don't surrender, he's gonna put that stick on you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's a principle. There's a pattern there. So surrender takes the pain out of suffering so that we can go through it a lot better with a lot better attitude because we understand why some things we just have to go through. Like Yahushua, he had to go to the stake. There was no way around it because he asked the Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But he understood the why. He had to go in order to reconcile us back to the Father. He wasn't the problem. Mankind was the problem. And so that's a principle, a pattern there. Sometimes we have to go through things for others to get a glimpse, to get help. Look at Joseph, same thing with him. He wasn't the problem. Look what he had to go through to help them, them same brothers. They threw him in the, in, the, in the pit and sold him into Egypt. So, so sometimes we go through things for others. Once we understand that, it ain't always our fault. It ain't always we messed up. And sometimes he sends us through those things to help others get their eyes open, to understand why. All right. Uh, what was we at? We were, uh, <clears throat> we were in 
First Kings 17. Yeah, keep reading that, that, that story. <laughs> All right, so um, the widow woman was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray you, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray you, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As Yahweh your Elohim lives, I have nothing but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that it may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Eliyahu said to her, Don't fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a little cake first and bring it to me, and then after make for yourself and your son. For thus says Yahweh Elohim of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that Yahweh sends rain upon the earth. Wow. She had what? A handful of meal and what? Two sticks. What do we know about two sticks? What do you mean? They represent the houses of Israel. Both houses of Israel. The house of Yehuda mm -hmm. and the house of Ephraim. And uh, <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 37, we see the house of Yehuda, one stick. And the house of Ephraim or the house of uh, Israel, the, the other stick. So she was carrying Yehuda and Ephraim. And guess what? The meal barrel never run dry for three and a half years. And it's a picture of the tribulation period. The tribulation period is going to last three and a half years, 1260 days, or 42 months. However, you want to divide it up. Or times and times, time and a half of times. They're all equal. Three and a half years. So, but because she was obedient. And see, the prophet was testing. He said, bring it to me first. But what did Yahushua say? Blessed is he to give a prophet just a drink of water. And what did she do? She brought the prophet. Not only a drink of water, but some bread. And look at the war she got. Her and her son made it through that three and a half year period while the rest of them were dying. <clears throat> See why it's so important to understand the why? It helps us to surrender our uh, if Nick rebellious will. Little Willie is a bad boy. Yes. What he can't change, he will destroy. And so when we do that, we get on his frequency. And here's another word for frequency. Anybody want to guess? Oh, I can't just do my <laughs> Here's another word for frequency. Hmm? Mm, that's good. Niche. We need to find our niche or frequency. See, how many like uh, the little company up there beside the big company? I won't call the name, but we'll go there and get stuff because we like that little company. That little company has found its niche, even though it's right it's with a half a block of this giant company. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But the little company has found its frequency or its niche within that. That's, that's a picture of us. All we have to do, we don't have to own everything. Just find your little niche inside of that. And you can be happy, survive, and prosper, have pleasure, power, and protection. All of those things. But you have to find your little niche, or your little frequency. <clears throat> How many see that? It's important that we do that. See, Because sometimes we get unhappy with ourselves and saddened with ourselves or depressed because we haven't found our niche. And it looks like everybody else is doing good but us, huh? I mean, it's felt like that. We've all had it. If we're honest, we've all felt like that. But all we got to do is keep searching till we find our little niche. And once we get in there, we won't be like a little, little widow woman. Look how she survived. She found her niche with the prophet, bringing the prophet a drink of cold drink of water and a, a piece of bread. She found that niche, and it lasted three and a half years. You see what getting your little niche does? You don't have to. See, sometimes we look at the other big companies and all of that. We, all we need to do is find that little niche. And we can survive and prosper and all the rest of it. Within, and they can still do their thing and we can do ours. Amen? 
So finding your niche is very important. It's another word for frequency. So if I just find my little niche, where do I belong? See, let's go towards it. Uh, Corinthians uh, <clears throat> talks about the body, all the different members. Uh, 12 and 12, 12. Let's start there. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 12 and 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is the Messiah. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Yudim or Goyim, whether we be bond or free. We have all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole, were, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now has Elohim set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now they are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. See, because we all have a niche in the body of Mashiach. See, if we were all with the eye, we'd be in bad trouble with you. We'd be hurting because we'd be in the dirt. <laughs> you <know? laughs> think you're a cloud, you got a cloud of vision. Yeah, you would have a, we would just have one big eye. See, but each member has its own little niche, its own little place. See, the hand can't say to the eye, I have no need of thee. Or vice versa, I have a ghost. And the foot can't say, and remember in the song, uh, I talk about this very thing because so many people want to be the chief dog, want to be the head, but there can only be one head. In this case, it's Moshiach Yehushua. But we can find our place in the body. So you say, well, I ain't but a little toe. Do you know how important your little toe is for balance? <laughs> well, the big toe. See, every part he made specially to make this body function like it's supposed to. See? What if our body was all heart? We just boom, 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 that kind of boom, boom, boom. <laughs> See? What if we were all foot? You wouldn't be able to go anywhere. Yeah. See? And so he made his TTT. Telling us, each one of us, find your little niche inside the body, and you'll be happy, you'll be prosperous, you'll find pleasure, protection, and power, all the things we're looking for. But we got to get on this frequency called niche inside of the body. See? A little more of that. All right, verse 22 is where we're at. Uh, nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but Elohim has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lack, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. See, we're all on different frequencies, but <clears throat> in the same, uh, in, in the uh, ham radio, you can be on the uh, 20 meters, but there are different frequencies inside of that 20 meters on both sides of that. Uh, and so it's just like in the body, we just got one body, but there's many, many members to that body. And we all got to work together for that body to function correctly and healthy. So, if you were a nose, be a nose. Don't worry about uh, uh, you ain't a fist or you ain't a big brain. 
just be a nose. If you're an ear, be an ear. Somebody's got to hear. Somebody's got to see. Somebody's got to smell. Because guess what? Supposing our some of our uh, senses fail. See? That's why he gave us other senses so we could push something else over there. How many see that? Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is find our little niche inside the body and be happy there. See? Everybody can't be the big eye. But we find our spot. And that's what he's asking us to do. Just find your spot and be happy and give it all you got. Give it everything you got. Because that little spot that uh, is yours is mine. Oh, we said mine is mine and I'm mine. See, that little niche you find is yours. Nobody can take it from you. See, the eye can't take from the hand. I mean, see that. And so the father is telling us, let's find our little niche in him and give it all we got. Remember last night we had a good, good thing on helps, being helps. Mm -hmm. That's a very important thing. We need, we need to find our little place and say, this is the spot. This is me. And be there. Do what you have to do on your spot. Because, see, what happens to the body when something falls down? Something else has to take its place. Trying to uh, uh, make up for the loss of something. And that makes the other part of the body work harder. Mm. See, And so we had that lesson. We need to all do what? Hold up our corner. Yes. Everybody needs to hold up their corner. It's very important that you hold up your corner. Whatever it is, hold up your corner. See, in the tabernacle, there were four classes of people. There were warriors, there was workers, there were worshipers, and there were givers. So hold up your corner. I'm sure you can find one, one of those four to do. Some of us do all four of them. <laughs> real long arms. Yeah. But if we didn't, then guess what? <laughs> fall down. So we'd really rather do all four and keep it afloat until y'all send somebody else to take some of the load off of us. Amen? Amen. Amen? So that's why it's so important to hold up your corner. Be where you're supposed to be. Do what you're supposed to do. Find your niche and do it with all your might and be blessed for it. Hey. Remember, inside the why is the solution and the answer we're looking for. But sometimes we wonder why, why, why. But we need to look and see and find out why. And look at Eliyahu, the great prophet. The why was so he could, so Yahweh could prove to the rest of the world, look how great I am. The rest of the world were dying. He said, these three I kept alive and they ate good during the time of famine. Look what we got now. Speaking of famine, he said the day will come when that be a famine, not for me to drink, but for the word of Yahoo. What do we have now? It's on us. Do you see what the, the wow. I'm talking about the religion. I ain't talking about the world world. I'm talking about what religion is doing. Yeah. Yes. It's desperate. See, there's a famine out there. That's why we got to know and be able to explain, explain the why to them so they can get their eyes open. So they can make a turn and get on a different frequency. That's very important in this journey that we help somebody else get off that wrong frequency and get on a good frequency. Mm -hmm. How many see that? Mm -hmm. And so tonight, my little lesson was, why are you on that frequency? But inside the why is your solution and answer that will help you navigate the pitfalls and the, the, the jump over walls and, and, and be an overcomer. See, these things are put in our way so we can be, that's why they're put in our way so we can be overcomers. 
Some are going to be 30 fold, some will be 60 fold, some will be 100 fold. We're shooting for the 100 fold. Remember, we took a dive. And once the feet leave the ground, mm -hmm. no we'll turning back. But guess what? Yahushua was there to catch us. Amen. <laughs> He's there to catch us. So isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And so tonight, let's find out a little niche in him. And we'll be so much happier. So much more encouraged. So much more positive. So much more grateful. Remember the fastest drying substance is gratitude. Gratitude. Dries like a you look at Adam and Eve, all the things he gave Adam and Eve, and one thing, and their gratitude was gone. Israel, the same way. All the things he did for Israel. And in 72 hours, their gratitude was gone. So let's be grateful and find our little niche uh, in that frequency. See, then we can be happy. We can be prosperous. We can have pleasure. We can have protection. And we can have power. Because we found the frequency where he wants us to be inside the body of Moshiach. Abba, we love, appreciate you, appreciate your son, Yahushua. Appreciate all that you do for us. Yahushua, amen. amen. One, two, three. Hallelujah!